Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to go over chapter 10, which has to do with business valuation. We'll use a lot of the techniques that we have learned in prior chapters in this chapter. Here are the objectives that we will go over. First, because we are dealing with small business, there are a lot of unique characteristics. So before we can go into valuation, we first have to take those uh, unique characteristics into account. So we need to adjust income and cash flow uh, when valuating a company. Second, because the business is a small business, we have to take into account um, the fact that the business is not easily sellable, there will be a illiquidity discount. Um, finally, we're going to apply the methods that um, we have learned in time value of money uh, techniques in capital budgeting to uh, value a company. So this is a discounted cash flow method. Uh, and to apply that method, we need to estimate cash flows to the firm and cash flow to the uh, owner. In addition to the discounted cash flow method, we will also look at multiples methods. Uh, finally, we will conclude this chapter like we did with the other chapters with an extensive Excel, uh, Excel examples to apply all these techniques. First, here is a brief overview of the valuation method. The discounted cash flow method is based on the time value of money principles. And the focus on the discounted cash flow methods are cash flows, not net income. This is very similar to the net present value method that we learn in capital budgeting. There are two basic growth model assumptions when we value a firm. The first is uh, the first model assumes that the company we are valuing is a mature company and therefore growth will be stable or constant throughout the life of the firm. The second type of company um, are in a either a, uh, a newer business, so it's in a high growth stage, or it could be in a declining business. The key there is that the company we are evaluating is going through a transition period. And that is a more common case, and that is a non-constant non -constant growth case. In addition to the discount cash flow valuation method, we the another method or another types of method are the multiples method. In the multiples method, we are looking at the value of a company relative to its peers. So it's considered a, rel uh, a relative valuation technique. Typically, what we will do in a multiples method is we focus on um, a particular item on the income statement. The item is oftentimes the um, EBITDA, which is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization, uh, or sales. The reason we focus on EBITDA and not net income is because a lot of times the choice of leverage which will affect interest expense as well as tax strategy are unique to the current owner and will be different for the buyer. And finally, when we are doing valuation, we typically will use more than one method um, to validate and cross-check our estimations. Next, whether or not we are using the discounted cash flow method or the multiples method, we need to make adjustments to the cash flows and the income. And the reason for that is because there are oftentimes unique situations that um, apply to the current owner that no longer apply to the new owner. Um, so we will need to adjust either income or uh, EBITDA, in this case income does not mean net income, um, and that will be for the multiples method or cash flows adjustments which will apply to the discounted cash flow method. Expenses, so what we want to do in the adjustment, there are three major types of adjustments. First are expenses and incomes that are unique to the current owner. So some, of com some common examples include health insurance for part-time employees, which typically would not, be, uh, would not have health insurance benefit, but because they are family members, they receive this benefit. Uh, and that, another common strategy that owners typically use is to take below market income. The reason for that is they can then generate more of the income in the form of dividend or cap better yet capital gain, which are subject to a lower tax bracket. Uh, and also the owner may get perks such as company cars or phones because 
she can write those off as a business expense. And of course, these perks will not be available and will not be necessary if the company is run by a professional manager. The second type of adjustments are synergies or benefits due to the acquisition. And this is oftentimes the reason why a business gets acquired. Um, and this can include um, sin uh, reductions in expenses because uh, some functions can be combined, such as bookkeeping, marketing. Um, those functions are, are needed, but when you have two companies, you you can you don't need double you don't need to double the size of the accounting department or double the size of the marketing department. Um, another major source of benefit is to be able to purchase in larger quantity and get better discounts. Find the last type of category for adjustments has to do with interest and taxes. Um, the new owner will typically have uh, a different debt strategy and also will face different tax brackets and therefore we have to adjust accordingly. So these are the three major categories of adjustments to income uh, and cash flows. Finally, we talk about illiquidity Ill discount. We make adjustment to the cost of equity in the last chapter, but when we are doing valuation, um, the discount is applied top line, meaning is the, uh, applied to the valuation, val the valuation or the value of the business rather than in the discount rate. So uh, this is particularly true if the buyer of the business is from a uh, is a well diversified investor. So that discount will not apply to the investor, but the discount still apply to the business being acquired because the business being acquired is uh, illiquid. The typical discount is 20 to 30 percent of the estimated value, so it is quite a significant discount. Now that you have a general understanding of the principles for adjusting cash flows and, and income, let's look at how we will estimate these cash flows. All the cash flows that are used in discounted cash flow approach will be after tax. So the after tax cash flow is equal to the adjusted EBITDA times one minus the tax rate. So adjusted EBITDA is what we describe um, in the last slide, we have to adjust income expenses to get the new EBITDA for the buyer. And then the tax rate, this is a second adjustment. Uh, the tax rate that we're going to use is the marginal tax rate for the buyer. Once we have the after-tax cash flow, then we will um, also need to take into account reinvestment. This is a remember the valuation of a business assume that the business is a going concern. So in order for the business to sustain this level of cash flow, it has to definitely um, continue to reinvest in the firm. So the reinvestment rate is the after-tax cash flow times a long-term reinvestment rate. And this long-term reinvestment rate is based on the target growth rate set by the buyer divided by the ROA return on assets of the current firm. And our free cash flow to the firm, so this for the entire entity, this is the value for the entire company, is the after-tax cash flow minus the reinvestments. We can also estimate the free cash flow just to equity holders. For if you do that, the reinvestment can be reduced by the amount of financing that the new equity holder may use. So the reinvestment amount is reinvestment times one minus the debt ratio. So just be careful that when you're using cash flow to the firm, you use a discount rate that is for a firm. And if you're using free cash flow to equity, you use a discount rate that is for just the equity holders. Once we have estimated the free cash flows, then we can apply the discounted cash flow methods. There are two major methods. The first is the constant growth method or the stable growth method. This assumes that the firm will grow at a constant rate. So the uh, value of the enterprise is simply computed as a growing perpetuity. So in the first case, we look at the enterprise value. This is the value of the entire firm is the present value of free cash flow to the firm. And this is, we described how to compute that um, just in the last slide. Uh, because we're computing the present value, we need to estimate next year or year one's free cash flow to the firm. And we can estimate that by um, multiplying the current free cash flow to the firm times one plus the growth rate. 
and the discount rate that we are using is the weighted average cost of capital so this is a discount rate for the entire firm minus the long-term growth rate if you are estimating the value to the equity holder then we'll take the present value of cash flow to free cash flow to equity holders so again um, this is a growing uh, perpetuity and the discount rate we will use is the cost of equity and we went over how to compute weighted average cost of capital and cost of equity in the last chapter the second model that we can use to compute discounted cash flow, uh, in the discounted cash flow method is the transition growth model in the transition growth model we have to estimate um, the cash flows during the transition period so there's a multiple step so the first step is to estimate the free cash flows during the transition period and then we'll have to estimate the long-term stable growth rate after the transition period and then we will compute the stable growth value in the future so this is a stable growth value after the transition period finally we'll compute the present value of all the cash flows so that will include the transition period cash flows as well as the stable growth value similar to the uh, constant growth or stable growth model we will use um, the free cash flow to the firm and the weighted average capital as a discount rate when we evaluate the enterprise value and we will use free cash flow to equity holders and cost of equity as a discount rate when we are estimating equity value once you have computed the value using either model we'll have to apply the illiquidity discount so the value after you take into account the discount is the present value that you computed so either the enterprise value or the equity value um, from using either the stable growth model or the transition growth model and we'll have to multiply that by one minus the illiquidity discount again this is between 20 to 30 percent this is the general framework for applying the discounted cash flow method next we're going to take a look at the multiples method in the multiples valuation method um, the value of the firm so this is the enterprise value is the value is equal to the market value of equity plus the market value of debt minus cash there's a general format that we can use the multiple is equal to the mar uh, market value divided by an item from um, the financial statements I call that the financial item this item can be EBITDA it can be sales um, it can also be some new method let's take a few examples these are the most common ones we can compute the market value to free cash flow ratio so this one doesn't use uh, income but uses free cash flow we have computed free cash flow um, in the um, in the uh, prior slides so the to compute this multiple we take the enterprise market value divided by free cash flow to the firm another very common ratio is market value to EBITDA so we take the enterprise market value and divide it by earnings before interest taxes depreciation and appreciation finally we have market to sales again the same same uh, approach so what we will do is we will look at uh, we will find a number of firms in the industry to compute the benchmark multiples so you may have uh, let's say you want to compute the multiples value for a restaurant you will look at recent sales of restaurants in the area or in a uh, similar scale and then you look at com you compute the multiples for this number of firms and then you can use that and then you can use the average of that as the multiple to apply to your current business you can also research um, in the um, industry database or industry um, group they tend to have common uh, value and benchmarks um, I'll take an example I, uh, I work on a case where we're uh, looking at the acquisition of a propane firm and they actually use um, infantry as a benchmark 
Finally, we apply the benchmark multiple, multiples that you have computed to estimate the value for the firm that you're analyzing. Here's some important things to, to remember about valuation. First, it is not a science. Um, a lot of it rely on experience and personal judgment. Non-financial information can be extremely important when you're dealing with a small business because you're ne negotiating with the owner directly. So the experience of the acquirer and also special circumstances can play a major role in the valuation. We will wrap this chapter up with an, with an extended example. We're going to create a valuation model for standing desk. Um, you will be, uh, the template is, the template for this spreadsheet is available on the course website. I'll see you soon.